let's move on to uh, a book nobody has ever heard of. Um, and yet it's the first book you mention <laughs> in the book, uh, John Inglesant. This is a book that was apparently very, very popular and much discussed uh, at a certain point and now has been almost completely forgotten. And Tolkien even said, uh, you know, later in life that uh, I think he said, few now find it possible to read or something like that. Um, but this was a not a fantasy tale, but a book of religious fiction, I guess you could say, uh, that I suppose naturally would have been of interest to Tolkien as a devout Catholic. Can you tell us about this work? Yeah, it's uh, it's called John Inglesant, A Romance. It's by the uh, the author J.H. Shorthouse. Uh, it's a very curious book. It's kind of an adventure. It's got some fantastical elements in it. It's It deals a lot with religious questions, particularly the question of Anglicanism versus Catholicism. You know, which which system is true? And Inglesant, the character, it's eponymous character, John Inglesant, he's constantly debating, should he stay Church of England or should he become a Roman Catholic? You know, will he, won't he? Um, and that's that's really debated throughout the whole, the whole book. Um, but it's also a rousing adventure. Um, and it's got some quite profound elements, some thematic elements of mercy and pity that I, I think are really significant influences on The Lord of the Rings. But this whole book was just very fascinating and it is the reason why I introduced it straight away because who, who now has heard of John Inglesant? <laughs> you know, basically no one has heard of John Inglesant. More people now that this book is out, but hitherto, nobody. Yet, in Tolkien's day, it was a bestseller. Um, the author um, Shorthouse was invited to have tea with the prime minister. Um, it was it brought him fame and fortune and boatloads of money. He built a fancy new house with the proceeds from from the book. Um, it was a colossal hit, and all the way into the 1950s, um, it could be referred to in the newspapers as a book that everybody had read. And one of the things that this brought home to me was the importance of looking at the context of Tolkien's own time. Because if we only look at the books that are familiar to us now, we have this kind of filter where we miss a lot of what was important to Tolkien um, because certain books have just, you know, not made their way to being republished in, you know, 2021. But this book is really quite important to Tolkien. Um, he mentions it in his letters. Um, he even um, had a collection of essays that um, included an essay on the book that he recommended, you know, to a friend. So he was very interested in what was going on in John Inglesant. Um, and so it's neat to look at that and kind of say, well, well, why? Why was he interested in this? And I think one of the things it does show is that he was quite interested in the big questions of his day, including, as you know, the, the religious questions, you know, Anglicanism versus Catholicism. He was interested. Tolkien could relate to him because he was not a full-time professional writer. Is that is that right, basically? Yeah, I think he he, he related to him, and, and Tolkien mentions this explicitly because in, um, Shorthouse had actually been um, involved in, in, as a businessman in um, production of chemicals, and then he wrote this this one book um, as a sort of an amateur right. devoted to right. this book, you know, for years and years writing it while continuing on his work as a, as a businessman. And Tolkien really drew a connection there because. He also was writing a long book, The Lord of the Rings, while pursuing his own career um, as an academic, as a professor. And so and Tolkien he lived actually- very close by as well. Sorry? He lived very close by as well. Yes. And that was an interesting thing. I was able to track down the fact that when Tolkien was a boy, when he was uh, living in um, Birmingham and, and under the care of Father Francis, um, he would have walked by Shorthouse's house every day as he walked to Mass. So this was something that was part of his local landscape. And he was a real local celebrity. Um, and in fact, Tolkien's math teacher um, knew Shorthouse. So again, it was a real local celebrity, um, not, you know, not just in his book, but as like a certain person you could see walking around the neighborhood. There's Shorthouse, you know, the famous author. So can you tell us about this theme of pity in uh, John Inglesant and how it may have, uh, what in Tolkien it may have influenced? Well, we see in, in this book, in, in Inglesant, it's it's a ridiculously complicated plot. I can't even possibly summarize it, but it involves um, okay. the, the, the hero Inglesant. Um, he's um, trying to avenge the murder of his brother, um, and eventually he tracks down his brother's murderer, um, encounters him, 
And at that point, Malvolti, the murderer, um, is in wretched state and basically throws himself in Ingleson's mercy. And uh, and Ingleson has the opportunity at that point to kill him, and it would be deserved because he's he's a murderer. He it would just be justice. He could just strike him down, but he chooses not to. He chooses instead. He turns him over to a local priest. He lets him go. He exercises mercy because he has pity on him. And then it turns out that later on, there are other plot complications. Um, he encounters the reformed Malvolti, who's now a friar, um, and it's through his help that he's able to resolve the difficulty that, that he's in. Um, so his, his mercy toward his fallen enemy is what ultimately enables um, him to resolve his own personal quest uh, in the story. And, you know, reduced to its bald lines, it might not seem like a whole lot, but if you look at the way that um, the scenes are presented, it's really quite evocative of the way that we have um, Frodo and Sam engaging with Gollum, and then we have Inglesunt in a, in a variety of scenes interacting with different characters. Um, so it's not just that string of events, it's even the way that um, Shorthouse is presenting these scenes, really highlighting this this theme of mercy and pity, and and that is such an important part of the Lord of the Rings. It's quite striking, really.